Hello everybody and welcome back to iCommand and we've got our final spoiler article, batch of spoilers for season 10. Um, I apologize if you guys can hear my car engine going in the background, that is because I had to I have to pick up my kid early from daycare today uh, after the holiday and I cannot turn off my car because it is 95 degrees outside right now so I am not going to cook just while I'm doing this short little video. But we've got the final batch of spoilers. I think it's four cards that were spoiled today, Friday, uh, June 5th, or no, July 5th, excuse me, uh, to show you guys, and we're going to cover it. I'm going to look at these cards, and I'm going to pretend I'm seeing them for the first time and uh, reacting to the cards as I see them. So let's go. We've got a uh, preview Season 10 spoiler heavy duty article, and our first card is going to be Paz Vizla, seven point vehicle heavy weapon brawler. Okay, so this is the guy from The Mandalorian, um, the uh, with the big heavy gun. Um, one of the Mandalorians, kind of a kind of a rival to Din Djarin. Um, so yeah, let's look take a look at what he can do. Thirteen health, speed four, black defense dice with a range attack of red, red, green. So definitely packing some heat there. Uh, he's got two surge abilities to gain one block power token and an innate uh, plus two accuracy on his attack as well as the mobile keyword. But no surges for uh, adding damage. <clears throat> so that all he gets is the dice roll damage and then he can convert surges into defense, which is pretty cool. And then he's got two abilities. The first one is Heavy Repeater. While performing a ranged attack, you may suffer one strain to apply plus one damage, blast two, or plus two accuracy to the results. Okay, so you can suffer a strain, you can get plus one damage, so that kind of helps out with not having a surge for damage ability. Or you can get blast two, so you can get some uh, AOE damage going, especially with him being a heavy weapon, he has access to things like... Uh, reduced to rubble and blast and a couple other things, collateral damage. Um, and then plus two accuracy. So he's got built in plus two already. So if you do take a strain for plus two accuracy, you're hitting minimum range five. So that's not bad at all, actually. <clears throat> uh, and then let's take a look. The second ability is submit or fight. When you would suffer strain, you may choose any number of command cards from your discard pile to return to the game box to prevent that much strain. Okay, cool. So that works with his first ability. So basically, instead of discarding a card from the top of your deck to take strain or taking damage, you can put cards, you can exile cards from your discard pile for that many, that, to prevent that much strain. Uh, that's cool. That's kind of, we, I think we had something similar uh, for Mern at one point, but uh, that got changed into her current ability. Uh, so this is this is cool. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of other things you could do. Oh, Grizzly Contest. That is a brawler card that you suffer two strain and you deal two damage uh, when you play it uh, during your activation. So that's a cool one. Let's see. Grizzly. Grizzly Contest. There it is. So that's a cool one. Uh, I'm trying to think what else suffers strain. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could use Chaotic Force. That's kind of funny. Intelligence Leak. Well, that's the only one I can think of currently. But I guess if you're going to suffer strain from other stuff, like your opponent's abilities, you can use this ability to prevent that instead. Um, yeah, so this looks pretty solid. I mean, he's a seven-point figure that can attack once, um, but he can do some pretty cool things with blast two or plus one damage, and he is very hard to deal damage to with strain. But let's take a look at what his command card does, because every time we make a new uh, deployment card that's unique, it also will have a unique command card to go with it. So for Paz, it looks like we've got... I might make this go away... There we go. Overheated is his command card. It's one point, and it says use during your activation. If you have the ranged attack type, uh, to perform an attack without spending an action. Okay, wow, free attack for one point. That's really good. 
Then you suffer four strain. Okay, there's another card to deal strain to paths, and your attack type becomes a melee for the rest of the mission. Oh, so he loses his ranged attack if he goes for the extra attack with the overheated. So that's kind of cool. You can overclock his gun almost to um, <clears throat> get extra attacks in faster, but uh, if he does that, he no longer can use his weapon and has to go for switch to melee attacks. So that's pretty cool. Um, interesting that you have to have the ranged attack type, which he does, uh, but something like Mar Jade cannot use this card since she starts with a melee attack type. <coughs> Um, yeah, this seems pretty powerful. Uh, also, I guess you cannot use it with... You can't excavate it with Aphra if you use it once. Like, if you play this card for the free attack and then try to Aphra it, you won't be able to use it because he doesn't have the ranged attack anymore. He's a melee attacker. But you could discard it to something like Strain or just discard it for some other effect uh, and then excavate it with Aphra. So that's pretty good. All right, let's take a look at the next card. All right, we've got Tauntaun Riders. So this, these guys are making their debut in Imperial Assault. Of course, Tauntaun Riders are a model available in Legion, so that's great. I'm sure a lot of people have been waiting a long time for a way to use their Tauntaun Riders in Imperial Assault. You can see it's got the little base indicator on there, so it is a two-space large figure, similar to an E-Web Engineer or a Dubak Rider. Uh, it's five points for a trooper creature, so this will be cool to start getting creatures in Rebels. It's got ten health, speed four, and a black defense dice, and a blue and a green ranged attack. It has the efficient travel ability, as well as an automatic pierce one on its attack, and then a surge for plus two damage, and a surge for plus three accuracy and plus one damage. So even though it's got a pretty small um, dice pool, a two dice pool it's got some really good attack abilities on it and then we've got three abilities we have mounted so we saw this on the speeder bikes uh, we've also seen this of course on dewback riders and Taro and captain Taro. at the start of your activation gain three movement points so not quite as fast as the speeder bikes but about as fast as a dewback rider which i believe also has four speed and then special action for headbutt move up to two spaces then choose an adjacent hostile figure and roll one red die. It suffers damage equal to the damage results. Okay, so you get to um, Grenadier one thing. Pretty good, especially with the move two spaces. So with mounted, I mean, you can move seven and then two more. So you can move nine spaces and headbutt something. Or if you're already if you've already got the Tauntaun Rider up in the battle, you could move three spaces with mounted, move two more spaces to headbutt, and still have an action left over to attack. So it's pretty good. Uh, but there's only one figure in this group. Just want to mention that as well. The speeder bikes had two. Uh, and then last ability is useful hide. When this figure is defeated, distribute up to two evade power tokens among friendly figures within three spaces. So that's definitely the, the thematic trinket text there. Uh, nod to the Empire Strikes Back where when the Tauntaun Rider died they used it to protect themselves from the inclement weather. Uh, like that. It's going to be interesting to see if it, how often that gets pulled off though because um, of course this Tauntaun Rider looks very aggressive in how it wants to be positioned. Uh, with that headbutt ability. But it, I would imagine if you have two of them, you know, you move both of them up to attack, or you play it at an aggressive list with something like Ezra or Ahsoka, <clears throat> and then you um, you make it so the opponent kind of has to deal with the Tauntaun Rider first, then your other figure that's getting in there will benefit from the extra defense from Useful Hide. So that seems pretty cool. Great to see the Tauntaun Rider finally getting brought into the game. I'm looking forward to seeing these on the table, especially with the uh, the minis from Legion. They do fit, actually. I check, you know, we checked this before we did it, um, especially to determine what size base. They do actually fit on a like E-Web size base in Imperial Assault. Um, you just kind of got to angle. There's one that you kind of got to angle the feet so it lines up, and then the body kind of goes diagonally. So, you know, it's a little bit 
a little bit wonky, but it, it does fit on the base. The Both of the, the Tauntaun Riders from uh, Legion do. And then finally, we have a updated version of Cross Training. So this is an existing card in Imperial Assaults. Uh, let's see. Cross Training. There it is. Uh, so this is what it used to be. <clears throat> it was one point for a trooper-only attachment that gives them the spy trait, and it lets them replace their defense dice with a white die when they're defending. Uh, so now we've got tr cross training. Is again trooper only one point. It's an elite attachment, so you can actually bring two of these. Uh, we've got the same thing. This group gains the spy trait. New text though: after deployment, each figure in this group becomes hidden. So that's pretty good. And then exhaust this card while a figure in this group is defending to reroll one defense die. Before rerolling, replace that die with another defense die of a different color. After rolling, the new die is considered rerolled. Okay, so that's different. So the old one, it lets you um, replace one die in your dice pool with a white dice, but you didn't get to reroll. This one, you get to see what you roll first, and then you can exhaust this to re-roll it as a different color. So you could actually re-roll a white into a black if you start off with a white defense dice. And in fact, I'm going to say that I think this is going to be really good on the speeder bikes that we saw in the last preview article. Let's see, I guess they would be right at the top here. <clears throat> yeah, the, I mean, the hidden's not super great on them uh, because their surge abilities are not that fantastic, but uh, you can reroll the white die into a black die, which is really nice. Um, I could see this being really good. You know, cro the original cross training was good on um, riot troopers, and I could actually see this also being really good on riot troopers because riot troopers have excellent, excellent surge abilities. The surge for plus two and surge for plus one. Um, I could see this being good on maybe snow troopers. Uh, but yeah, Riot Troopers, being able to reroll that defense dice would also be really good. Let's see, I'm trying to think what else, what other troopers are there that this would be good on? E-Webs don't really want it. Jet Troopers don't really want hidden. Riot Troopers are good. Um, oh, you could put it on Blaze, I think. Even though he's already a spy. Oh no, he's not a trooper. That's not he's not a trooper. Let's see. <clears throat> you can't put it on flame troopers because they're they're already an attachment. Uh Iden Versio might not mind this. But yeah, there's some interesting things you can do with this for sure. And it will be interesting to see what uh troopers people put this on. I think this will fill an interesting niche, niche alongside Vader's Finest, um, because the figures that can't bring Vader's Finest because they have three, um, three attack dice in their printed dice pool, could bring this instead and get that hidden, um, that extra hidden uh, benefit at the start of the round. So that's it for Season 10 spoilers. Uh, we'll definitely be covering the Season 10 playtesting. I've got some reactions coming up from players that I've gotten, and um, looking forward to, to seeing people playing the new cards. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will catch you next time.